as y is cubic or quadratic in the output space of y. <coughs> quadratic or cubic in the output space of y. If you only depend on a single y at a time, it's linear in the output size of the output space of y. Okay. So what this does is it abstracts away all the model structure, which is if you only look at pairwise comparisons, triplet comparisons, no, no dependencies, each y independently. We just convert that into a feature map, we have a linear model, and we can just do maximizing prediction by maximizing the, find the y that maximizes the score. Okay, so we have 10 minutes. Okay, so we'll go quickly. So this is the general graphical model formulation um, of a condition of a, of, in this case, a condition around the field for, with pairwise features. And then we just take the identity of these y's, whatever feature factors they activate, sum it up, and then compute the linear score. So this is what a um, higher order CRF looks like if the models are, the models multiple things. So here's the second order. We can do a tree structure, right? Um, so CRF linear uh, conditional fields that we talked about today. By the way, these are all called conditional random fields. If you look in the literature. These are all called conditional random fields. What I presented in, in lecture is a first order linear chain conditional random field, which is a special case of a first order tree structure conditional random field. So a first order tree structure random conditional random field has more or less the same property as these pairwise potentials or pairwise feature vectors that, that goes into the sum, but now it's instead of just a single path, it's a tree. So given the set of x's, I want to find, I can, I can score any y. Okay. And finding the optimal y, uh, you can also solve using dynamic programming. Uh, the optifi it's called the max product algorithm for tree graphical models, where Turby is the special case of the max product algorithm for linear chain graphical models. So here's a simple version of this. It's not the most efficient implementation, but it works, and it is on real real time. Uh, so if we have some tree structure, declare one of these to be the root, arbitrarily. Um, we solve for the partial solution. So remember, Turby solves for partial solutions, right? You can again solve for partial solutions, solve for partial solutions, and then solve, right? And this works because there's no cycles, right? In a linear chain model, you solve for partial solutions because you can keep solving partial solutions here. Um, the partial solution for this one, condition on the children, does not depend on anything over here. So it just works the same way. You can this as a parallelized the term here. What's the kind of problem where you want to do something like this? Like so you want to predict the parse tree, right? Well, OK, so that's even more complicated. A more complicated version of this problem is predicting a parse tree. So, like, instead of giving it input sentence, rather than just part of speech tag, I'm going to predict the entire tree structure. Right? Okay. That's actually more complicated than this yeah. because that has that dynamically is, decides on the structure. Um, this one, I mean, I mean yeah, that's not an example from biology. Is that if you have a phylogenetic tree, okay, yeah. and then you want to model something in that phylogenetic tree, okay, um, there you go. What's yeah. the meaning of the topology in this tree here? There's not necessarily a meaning. You can give it a meaning, and you can encode that meaning in a feature vector, but it doesn't have to have a meaning. I just pick a root node arbitrarily. Yeah. And in fact, every edge corresponds to a parameter in the model. Well, it corresponds to a feature vector that depends only on the x's and these and the two y's at the, at the end of the edge. So this is a graphical model with no cycles. This is a graphical model with cycles. So they're called loopy graphical models. Um, they're off, one, one of the original applications, the big applications from back in the day, and still is to some extent, is in depth perception. So given two binocular images, I have two cameras in parallel, take a photograph. 
I like to treat the depth mapping by looking at the, 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 the disparity of the two pick up pixels in the two cameras, right? Things that look very shift, things that look more shifted in the two cameras are going to be closer to the camera. Things that look less shifted are going to be further away from the camera. This is how binocular vision works. So every pixel it has it has a y that corresponds to the depth, right? And we measure the quality of a prediction. What happened on here? We measure the quality of the prediction of this. So so we have to assign a a depth score like. Depth zero, depth one, depth two, depth three. So here, this is depth zero, and then that's depth eight, I think, right? So you assign one of these depth scores to every y, right? And then the feature, and then the, the feature vector encodes the fact that you want you you want neighbors to be similar, right? If this is depth eight, if this is depth seven, then this pixel is likely also depth seven, right? So that's encoded in the uh, feature vector of pairs, right? You want them to be similar. But you also want them to match the image, right? If this is depth eight, that means this pixel matches a pixel that's shifted over here, right? And that's your x. And so you want to match both the fact that the pixels, the, the, the depths of neighboring pixels should be similar, and the fact that the, the whatever depth you predict should lead to consistent pixel colors from the shifted version of the right image versus the original pixel location of the left image. And, and that also can be formulated as a linear model, a linear, uh, linear scoring function over these features on pairs of on pairs of pixels. The problem, of course, is that this is not uh, uh, a cyclic graph. There's cycles, right? So whatever you predict here, you, know, you can no longer fix, and because you know, because this let's say let's say this guy, you decide to make this guy a partial solution depending on this guy, and this guy's a partial solution depending on this guy, this guy's a partial solution depending on this guy, now this guy's a partial solution depending on this guy, and now you have a cycle, right? So it's NP hard to actually find the maximizer, right? So this is one. This is a case where actually you don't have you cannot efficiently find the optimal solution. But people do this anyways. You can there are approximation algorithms that can solve this approximately. Is hardness only a problem if I you know if I had genuinely random pixels that were at random depths? Hardness is generally a, is, is actually a problem. You can find pretty suboptimal solutions. Uh, string alignment is another thing you can do with these graphical models. So now f is a scoring function. So x is a pair, x is a pair of strings. So, and then y is an alignment. So if this was used, for example, in predicting uh, the, the folding structure of, and function of proteins, where you have a database of well-known proteins, and now we have a large, uh, larger database of proteins that are similar to the database of well-studied proteins. And then we want to one way to predict the folding structure of this larger database of proteins is to try to align it to one of the similar proteins in the presence of insertions and deletions and shifts and stuff like that, and mutations and stuff like that. So you can also model this as a as a structure prediction problem with a linear scoring rule. Right. So it encodes different types of substitutions, insertions, deletions. So if you if you do this at, and if these scores are all negative, you maximize this to find the best fit. They're positive. You actually want to minimize this to find the lowest cost match with the, with a uh, x and d. Uh, you can do this for rankings. So this is a topic of uh, great interest in mainly the web search companies like Google, Microsoft, Yahoo back in the day. Back when I was in grad school. Um, okay, so the basic idea is that you know you can model pairs of you can model your y's can be pairs of, uh, of search results, and one means the first uh, so y i j means is one if um, a result i should be ranked before result j y i j is negative one if result i should be ranked after i j so you get this preference matrix, and then you have a linear scoring rule, and you use this to do to learn rankings, and the maximizer of this. Is by by the structure of the scoring rule is a sort on the individual scores. Uh, again, you know, if you're interested in more details, there are references here. Just going through a brief overview, I'm almost out of time. So, just a summary of general structure prediction. It's a very very general problem. In fact, most problem most problems that people think about in the real world are actually structure prediction problems rather than simple regression or classification problems of some kind. Structure of some kind. Because there are multiple predictions you have to make that's independent of each other. It arises all over the place in natural language processing and computer vision. Um, uh, 
graphical models we talked about. Uh, many algorithms, there are many algorithms for structure regions. Sarah, we just talked about one of them. You could do structured SVM, so there's a SVM formulation of this. Not to, we've looked at logistic regression generalization of this. We do perceptrons, so on and so forth. And in fact, is the topic of the entire class, and I'm planning on teaching a special topics course in structure prediction spring of 2017. So spring of 2016, next term I'm teaching a different special topics course. But well, spring of 2017, I'm teaching a special topics course in um, machine learning for structure prediction. Okay, so that's it for uh, this week. Next week, uh, there's no lecture on Thursday. It's the student faculty uh, conference, right? Is that what it's called? Student faculty conference. Um, so please go to that. Uh, there is a recitation Thursday night, which is a review of conditional random fields. So if you saw a lecture today, you decided you want to see a review of it before you really dig in on the homework, which is due next, next Tuesday. Um, Please, please go to the recitation next Thursday. And next Tuesday is a bonus lecture. It's, it's just a fun lecture. I'll be talking about some recent applications uh, of uh, using a concept called learning reductions with applications to edge detection, camera planning, and animation.